Okay, another fun adventure. Just pulled the new tractor outside. It's idling pretty decently. It sounds a little loud because the muffler isn't, uh, well, all intact. But I'm going to get the uh, H out here. Let's see how fast this thing will fire up. <clears throat> yeah, let's see if I can get it out of gear. Okay, in neutral. Okay, a little bit of throttle on. There she goes. Didn't even need any choke. My uh, added feature is this red tail light. Isn't that fancy? I just put a lens over the uh, original one with some zip ties so I have some light at the back. And I wired up the front lights. I haven't been wired up in a long time. Okay. I'm going to try and move the snowblower. Get it inside for the winter. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully the H is strong enough to lift it and move it. Well, got it all on. Didn't tip over yet. This just has a hydraulic, one hydraulic cylinder on the right side. Just has up, doesn't have down. Just, just has a gravity uh, pressure release down. So we'll see how far I can go without tipping it. <laughs> Hopefully this thing doesn't stab me in the back. <laughs> Sure is running good though. Thankfully, another successful adventure. And when it snows, I'll just back the H up and uh, disconnect it outside and hook the John Deere up to it. Because it's more difficult to uh, to run the snowblower with the H because it has it doesn't have a live PTO and when you put it into gear and you uh, release the clutch, it's putting strain on the PTO shaft because it's starting to engage, but it's also straining on the uh, the wheel. So it's it's trying to spin two things at once: the PTO shaft and the uh, the axle. So um, uh, unless it was say a diesel where it has a little more torque, it it could withstand that that short time where it's uh um under more under more load the starting load i guess you'd say maybe um but with the john deere you can have it driving in reverse and then have it completely revved up and engage we might not want to have it completely revved up depending on what kind of snowblower you have but uh with ours just rev it all the way up uh to move snow and it doesn't, the engine isn't under as much stress as when, when you release the clutch. But with this, uh, with this snowblower, it's a big snowblower. Um, like I, you might be able to get away with this little smaller snowblower. This one's quite, quite, it, it's, it's an, it's a moderate size one. And it, uh, it's a, it might be a little big for this tractor. I think it's around a 35 ish horsepower tractor. So the John Deere has almost, it's 95 horsepower, so it's substantially more, three times the amount. And uh, this, with the John Deere, it's it's a 3140, and it, it can withstand this, um, what is it, a six foot uh, or five foot uh, auger. And uh, it performs quite well. Depending on whether we get enough snow for it, we'll use it. So if there isn't even enough snow, we could just use the... Uh, the bucket on the front end loader and it'll do it'll suffice um and i had to be very careful because my grandpa added uh, a piece of copper pipe on the um chute control so to, for turning the chute um and it had to be very careful because it got really close to the seat when you sit down on the seat you'll need lean back a bit so I had to be a little careful there uh, but yeah the h hasn't uh hasn't been used in a while for something like this like uh, load a heavy load so yeah it lifted and performed well um the hydraulics all seemed like they worked okay 
and there's still no leakages, so that's good. Um, this uh, Ferguson uh, still needs a muffler, um, and uh, the carburetor still needs to be cleaned out. And I've been watching a few videos of people that have taken apart the rear end, and they found a lot of sludge and buildup in the bottom of the rear, or well, the bottom of the, uh, well, I guess it's the, the part of the rear end that holds the hydraulic pump. And I've been thinking about it since this is such an old tractor. I think it's a 5152. I, I can't be certain. I'm pointing, I'm looking and pointing at a few manuals online that say it might be a 52. The rear end stamp on the side said 51. I think it said September or August. It's either 8 or 9 uh, for the month. So um, it could have been, uh, like the rear end could have been made in uh, 51 and then it didn't get shipped out till 52. And I was reading about the engine. So apparently there's two different engines. One is more prone to uh, cracked blocks. And the little form I was reading stated that if you do f see a, a weld on the block somewhere, they wouldn't recommend using it for um, like constant use or heavy duty use. So I'm going to definitely look into what years that was more common. It stated that the T T E A uh, 20 or the um, 2085 um, came with two different engines and they switched. I can't remember if it said the uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The, the website said, um, they switched in the end of 51, I believe, or something around there. And then for 52, they had a different engine. It was a little bit bigger, and it was the 28 horsepower. The other one was a 25-ish or 24-ish horsepower. I'm not sure where they measure the horsepower based on the PTO or the engine or the wheels I or the pulley on the back. Some of them said the pulley power, and I said, okay, well, how, <laughs> which way is it getting measured? I don't know. It would be neat to find out, so I'm going to do a little bit more research. Um, but the TE20 my grandfather, or my great-grandfather had, it it didn't have the, uh, the uh, um, what do you call it, uh, running boards, I guess you could say. And for the clutch, it uh, this one's got the pedal down there. But since my great-grandfather only had one leg, his right leg, he didn't have a left leg and he wasn't able to drive a tractor like a normal person. And he had a uh, lever. I'm not sure if it was my uncle or one of the people at the shop um, that they bought it from in uh, Hagersville um, in the 50s. They attached a hand clutch so he could clutch with his hand, shift with his right hand, clutch with his left, shift with his right. And he'd have to uh, use an elbow to steer, I guess. But the um, original tractor, I'm not sure where it went. I have to ask my grandfather. It was, uh, yeah, it was a TE20. It had a similar, similar, very, very similar to this tractor. It's almost, almost identical. Just a few things like the engine. Um, what else was there? I think the air intake was a little different or something. Like this one has the one on the dash. So I... <laughs> I don't think ether should be used on it, but I guess if someone in that time was using ether, they could spray in there a little more conveniently. But it goes in there and comes out down there. And uh, I guess a, another guy that uh, had a video about why they made that was for those that had cabs. They could have the air uh, going through a cab so that there was a draw. It was getting sucked through to keep ventilation in the cab. Or something like that. It was it was interesting. I, I don't really think it would be very effective, but it was an interesting thought. And um, yeah, so I've been told that the uh, stickers on the side that say twenty eighty five are quite well, not rare, but not as common around because they're so worn. And the Ferguson there, it's uh, it's in good shape, and the front Ferguson's in good shape. So I'm pretty pretty pleased with everything I've learned about this tractor. The hydraulics work, the PTO works. It has a an increaser on it. Someone's added, like I had with uh, the 8N that I worked at work uh, worked on at work. It had the original inch and an eighth PTO shaft. They put a cover on it with a bolt through, 
to make it an inch and a quarter to use with more uh, modern implements. And yeah, it's it's um, working well so far. Everything's been performing okay. Um, once the carburetor kit comes and uh, I get that rebuilt, hopefully it will idle. And it'll be a lot quieter with a proper muffler on it. My muffler job, it's just I just patched together a piece of uh, tin and, and kind of bent it around and put two muffler clamps on it. It was kind of silly, but it was totally rotted out. And hopefully I can get a new muffler on there, new pipe. I believe the um, generator is original 6-volt generator. Um, I My grandfather says that everything he's ever worked on I mean, he's not a mechanic, but he still worked on quite a few pieces of machinery. He said that whenever he was doing something where he had to put a new battery in a six volt system, he just, uh, what did he do? So he would like um, replace the magneto with a distributor and like with a coil and distributor and a battery, a 12 volt battery. And then he would take the um, resistor off. He would just take the resistor off. And he said that there's a chance that the points, the, the um, contact points, ignition points, uh, have a higher chance of failure. But in the amount of time that he's had this H, which he did do the same thing, he took the resistor off, had no resistor in the ignition system, the points had only gone on it once. And that's in 50 years. And it's a 46. So I... I guess he's kind of right in that sense because the resistor gets really, really hot and apparently it can cause some issues. And that's what, that's what he's done. It's worked out. The um, the Jeep, we call it the Jeep, but the Canadian military pattern, I don't know if it would have had a resistor on it either. Uh, I know Grandpa put new um, points, spark plugs and wires when he first got working on that thing. So maybe it, maybe it did have a resistor. I'm not sure. But yeah, some interesting facts about uh, these old uh, things. I mean, not facts, but things I've learned. Yeah, so that's that's it for this video. I just wanted to try and see if I could get that snowblower in. I'm happy I did. So that was a success, and just getting ready for winter. And maybe when we get some snow, I'll pull out a snowmobile and start working on it. There's the old Citation that has the bent handlebars. It steers really well, just... Need some handlebar, new handlebars on it or try and straighten those ones out. Oh, also, under this tarp is the uh, 86 uh, Suzuki GS750. And it got a new friend, the 1983 um, Suzuki GS650 Katana. And if you look closely, the engine's sitting right there. <laughs> um, Dad wants to keep both of them. I don't know why. He's planning on using the 750 if he can get a new uh, alternator, I think. It needs a new alternator, needs a new uh, rectifier, I guess, he said. Uh, um, let me see. Something fried on it. Electronics need work. He wants to keep it and turn it into a dune buggy. He wants to build the frame up and make a dune buggy out of it. The 650, he wants to try and fix up and sell or just, I don't know what he wants to do with it, honestly. Better for scrap, but uh, it's a rarer bike. He wants to keep that. And the rest of it over here is just snowmobiles. But anyways, uh, again, thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next video. Bye for now.